Welcome to the Lock Sportscast, your weekly source for Lock Sport news. This is episode 101, recorded May 10th, 2022. I'm your host, Charles Curran. In today's episode, copying T-Pain's key, a piston pin challenge lock, a magnetic challenge lock, Peterson's prices increase, thieves armed with a vacuum cleaner, sales, giveaways, and more. You can subscribe to the audio version of the show on most podcast apps and at thelocksportscast.com. You can subscribe to the video version on YouTube, Odyssey, or Apple Podcasts. Links to stories discussed will be in the show notes. Some apps limit the length of show notes and the ability to post full links, but you can always find those at thelocksportscast.com. And a quick correction and apology. Last week, I missed announcing a couple of people's new Lock Pickers United belts. I didn't do a thorough job when looking for new belts, and I didn't notice that there were some new ones further down in the search. So I apologize for that, and I will get those in today's episode. So first up this week in community news, we have SE Lock and Key has just hit 10,000 subs on YouTube. So congrats to you for that accomplishment. And Lock Noob has officially passed the 100,000 sub mark. A uh, huge milestone. Way to go, Lock Noob. And last week, I received a note from a Dave B. He said he had a magnetic challenge lock that he had made and wanted to know if I would be interested in giving it a try. He says that both Bosnian Bill and Lock Picking Cuber have given it a try and had some success, but neither got a full open. I unfortunately had to decline. I don't have enough free time to work on something like that right now, and my track record recently of getting challenge locks sent back out is abysmal. So I didn't want to be responsible for uh, taking that thing and and forgetting about it for a while. So uh, I did politely decline on that. And he mentioned that he was having a hard time getting anyone to actually want to pick it. He's uh, reached out to a few people, and so so far they haven't uh, taken him up on it. I thought it would be nice to mention it here on the show. If you're curious and want to know a little bit more about the lock, you can check out a link in the show notes. Lock Picking Cuber did make a quite lengthy video on the lock, how it's assembled. It is a completely custom made lock. This is not a factory lock modified into a challenge lock. This is a completely custom made lock. And during our conversation, one of the questions Dave had was that in the rules he had found for challenge locks, they say that it must be a modified existing lock, and he wondered why new designs were not acceptable or desired. I, I of course, replied that I don't think there are technically any rules for challenge locks, or I don't think there should be. There are guidelines for what makes an acceptable challenge lock generally, but they're not hard, fast rules. And the only rules that I am aware of that are hard and fast are for what qualifies for a blue belt in the Lock Pickers United belt system. And that does say that it has to be a factory lock modified into a challenge lock. However, making your own lock from scratch, which is what this is, is actually a black belt quest. So it's not that it's not acceptable. It's just at a totally different class. Most people aren't going to make their own lock from scratch like this, and especially not to this quality level. So uh, definitely something to be proud of. Also, if you want to know more about the lock, be sure to head over to Lock Picking Cuber's site and watch the video he did where he did a complete teardown and pick attempt on this, a, a fairly lengthy video. So be sure to check that out. Link, of course, will be in the show notes. You can also see some of Dave's other custom created locks on uh, Bosnian Bill's channel. I have links to both of those videos in the show notes. If you want to see the quality of his work, be sure to go over there and check that out. And if you are interested in perhaps receiving this challenge lock and giving it a try, then uh, I guess shoot me a message and I will forward that information on to Dave so that he can reach out to you. Be sure to include your contact information if you are interested in trying the magnetic challenge lock. And last week during the sales section, I had noticed that I could no longer access Matt's lockpick website. It appears that he put out a post that said, So as some of you will have seen, I have closed the website. 
I'm going to be taking a break from making picks. At this present stage, I'm not sure if this will be temporary or permanent. I'm sure I'll end up knocking up the odd one here and there, though. Just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone for all of the support. Sad to see that site go. So I hope that Matt is doing well and that this is just a change of focus. All the best to Matt and uh, hope to see more from him in the future. And Dark Arts Lockpicking put out a tweet who, that said, Who wants to come on a live stream party with Lockpicking Patrolman and I? We are looking for people who want to celebrate with us. So that sounds like a fun uh, a live stream. So want to definitely encourage that to happen. And if you want a link to the tweet, it'll be in the show notes. Unfortunately, for uh, the people watching the video version of this, there is no image of the tweet on the screen as there normally would be because Twitter decided to block my Brave browser that I use for displaying the images on the video version of this podcast. And right before hitting record on this video, I received a note from Deviant Olam about a video he recently put out that he thought was kind of fun called Let's Copy the Key to T-Pain's New Place. So the music artist and producer T-Pain recently announced on Twitter that he was investing in a restaurant. And like many proud new owners do, he shared a selfie holding up the keys to his new place, saying, I did it, boys. I'm officially a restaurant owner. Got my keys today. This resulted in a fair amount of feedback from the internet and a number of people tagging Deviant. So Deviant put together a video demonstrating just how easy it is to get the key bidding from that photo. And uh, Deviant in his note said, In the end, it was fun to do, but also quite nice to see that T-Pain was aware of the risks here, as he later commented that the property is currently unoccupied and that he'll be changing the locks in the coming week. Definitely worth checking that video out. Definitely if you haven't seen how easy uh, Deviant system makes copying keys from a photo, you definitely need to check it out. And even if you have, this is a really good practical example of doing it. Even with a less than ideal quality photo, he still manages to pull out a really good, probably very accurate bidding on that key. So just really good to highlight just how dangerous it can be to show your key on the internet. Recently, uh, Lock New made a video about a piston pin challenge lock where he picked this lock and then gutted it and one of the pins inside was this amazing, uh, what he calls a piston pin, a fully articulated serrated piston pin. It is a really cool two-piece pin that is shaped and, and kind of functions like a piston uh, in that the, the top part the actual piston can move on the piston rod in an articulated way, kind of like a piston moves around its wrist pin. Anyway, uh, very cool, beautifully done pin work in that lock. If you haven't already seen it, you should. But what also is really interesting is that DMAC put out a video this week called How to Make Piston Pins for Challenge Lock. The description of that video says, I first saw these challenge lock pins in a recent video by Lock Noob and I had an idea how I'd go about making some of my own. The method seems pretty good so far, and I'm looking forward to refining the process a little in the future. Anyway, a very good detailed video about how to make piston pins for challenge locks if you are interested. The ingenuity of people in these challenge locks just really, really fascinates me. And while we're on challenge locks, T-Pain sounds like a good name for a challenge lock, by the way since we were just talking about him, it just dawned on me that that would be a good name for a challenge lock, if it isn't already. Moving on to products, we have a new Locksport tool shop for the UK and EU. It's called the Locksport Shop. Tools, picks, and other Locksport items, only the finest. And it appears to be by Gravity Karma. And the About Us section says, Gravity Karma, lock picker. As a black belt picker who likes to use quality tools, I wanted to put what I think are the best and the best value in the hands of the UK and EU pickers. So you can find that site at uh, locksport.shop. And looks like, uh, at first glance, it looks like the picks are the Jimmy Long style picks. So definitely can recommend those. I've used those. I really like those picks. So uh, good quality stuff. Check it out. And as I've been teasing for a couple of weeks, 
Rubber Band's impressioning handle is now back in stock and available again. It is currently called the Foxhole Security Impressioning Handle and is at uh, $85 US on his site. The description says, This is a homegrown product, our very own impressioning handle designed in-house. The Imperial Measurement Handle is made of steel with 3D printed sleeve for the tension post. Included is three cup point and three high hold cone point set screws and a two inch long tension post. The back of the handle is threaded to store the tension post and sleeve when not in use for easier storage. All holes are drilled and tapped for quarter 20 thread and all screws use a 1 8 inch hex drive Allen tool, which is included. You can find that at hooligankeys.com. So be sure to check that out. And Barebones Lockpicking has a new product and discount code. The new product is called the Pick Roll and Dimple Flags. The roll has 12 slots and a separate zippered area for holding tensioners or other small items. They say that it holds all of their handled products and is made from sustainable PU leather. The dimple flags are full tang with each pick weighing approximately 25 grams. The handle is a merged design of the femur and coffin handle to provide a comfortable grip with easy rotational control. A link to the product will be in the show notes if you want to go check that out. And their website says that uh, HV Logic will be one of the reviewers for the bone dimple picks. The current plan is to have his review out this week. So stay tuned to HV Logic's channel if you want to know what the, uh, what the picks are actually like. And if you're interested in any of the uh, Bare Bones Lockpicking products, you can uh, stay tuned to the sales section of the show where I will have a new discount code that they have issued. And Peterson sent out a note saying that they will be having a price increase at their site, thinkpeterson.com. The note reads, best of luck to you in this crazy world. I get slapped in the face every time I go to the grocery store or gas station, just like you do. But we are also getting slapped in the face by my suppliers every time we place an order. Reason? Gas has gone nuts. So the same for plastic, when you can find it. We had a pre-mixed batch of red, hence the red pick sets. But our molder has increased his per part charge for the third time in two years, in addition to the plastic price increase. So unfortunately, we had to raise our prices so that our employees and I could also afford to buy food and gas, plus the required parts for Peterson. Along the many years, we have changed suppliers to keep our costs down, often ignoring the lesser cost increases, not passing them on to keep from constant small increases. But they add up as time goes by. So as I went through this unhappy exercise, I corrected everything. Just looking out for you, telling you now, so that you won't be surprised by the price increase at Peterson that all of us see in the grocery store every day. Most of our pricing is up by only 10 to 15%, but there are some notable exceptions, as you can understand from reading the above. And they also go on to say that uh, to help those of you who are planning on making a purchase in the near future, there is a coupon code for 15% off, and I will have that in the sales section of the show as well. So stay tuned for that if you want to buy any Peterson stuff. And on the meetup front, one last reminder for B-Sides Seattle. They have a lockpicking village for learning the basics and trying hands-on lockpicking techniques. Sounds like lockpicking dev is planning on being there. So if uh, you're going to be in the area, be sure to stop by and say hi and maybe give them a hand teaching people how to pick locks. That is happening on Saturday, May 14th. At, uh, starts at about 8.30 a.m. So if you're in the Seattle area, I recommend you stop by and at least say hi. Moving on to the Lockpickers United belts this week. We have a new brown belt. We have the greenish one, who is now going by the brownie one, who earned the brown belt. So congratulations on that. Uh, last week, I forgot to announce two red belts, one for Cripix and the other for Reverend the Finagler. So I apologize for that, but congratulations on your red belts. And then uh, this week, Lemon earned a red belt. So congratulations to Lemon. We also had one new black belt announcement. Ru1 earned their black belt this week, and the announcement said, Everyone, let's put it together for our newest black belt, Ru1. 
Like a true Australian, he picked the Bylock along with the EVA ICS. Along the way, he has made some outstanding picks and has shown his skill in safe manipulation as well. So congratulations to Ru1 on the nice new black belt. For anyone that is not familiar with the Lock Pickers United belt system or what it is, there are links in the show notes to the rules and some videos explaining exactly how the system works. And be sure to check those out and join in the fun. With that, it's time to say thank you to the people that made this episode possible. I will start with the Patreon subscribers. We have Pandafrog, Michael Gilchrist, Starlock, Williams Brain, Dave to be deciphered, Lebon's Locksport Journey, Pat from Uncensored Tactical, Three Raccoons and a Coat, Terrell, Dr. Hogmaster, Clayton Howard, aka Cooltoon, Mog, John Law, Rat Yoke, Mr. Picker, Cranky Lock Picker, JHP Picking, Bare Bones Lock Picking, Deadbolt Cafe. Chief content producer for this episode is Terrell. That means he sent in the most information that was used in this episode. Other content producers for this episode are Albert LaBelle, Bare Bones Lockpicking, Dark Arts Lockpicking, Dave B, Deviant Olam, Ifisk, Jeff and Things, Joe Picks, Joshua Gonzalez, Mix 777 Oz, Mr. Lockpicker, Panda Frog, Rain, Reverend Picking Locks, Rubber Band, Tiger Trav, Tony Varelli, and Zachary Willard. Thank you to all of you for your support. And remember that this show would not be possible without that support. So if you are getting value from the show, please help support it just like these people did by sending in your news, links, events, giveaway information, anything you have that's Locksport related that you think the community might want to know about. Send it to podcast at locksportscast.com or any of the other methods listed in the show notes. Don't forget to share the podcast with your lockpicking friends. Leave a review or a comment, a thumbs up, depending on the platform that you're working on. And of course, if you don't want to miss any episodes, be sure to subscribe to the audio or video version of the podcast. And if you want to help financially, you're welcome to donate via PayPal or subscribe on Patreon. You can find all the different ways to help the show at thelocksportscast.com slash support. If you support the show with donation or information that I use in the show, I will give you credit in the show and in the show notes. If you have any interesting stories about uh, things that have happened to you because your involvement in Locksport or because you're a locksmith or anything like that, be sure to send them in. I would love to share them on the show. If you want to leave feedback, go to the locksportscast.com slash contact. If you want to be kept confidential, I can do that too. Just uh, be sure to mention that. Or if you want, I can share it on the show. It's your choice. If you want to share it on the show, be sure to keep it reasonable length, polite, work family safe, not political, and not just drama. Back into the news here. There's a new article on lockjudge.com about the uh, Squire Locks, about some of their history and such. The article says that Squire Locks have been around for a long time. They are one of those strong and reputable British brands that have withstood the test of time, similar to brands like Mini and Aston Martin. Squire Locks are independent lockmakers that have been a family business for around eight generations. That's over 240 years. They got started about the time of the Napoleonic Wars and helped to make hardware for the military. If you are interested in Squire Locks history and want to know a little bit more, read the rest of the article. You can just head over to lockjudge.com and uh, check it out. And this this criminal story here is uh, technically not lock picking, and it's pretty old actually. But I thought it, Ifisk shared it, and I thought it was just really really amusing. It points out that you need to look at all the areas of your security for weak points because the criminals are doing just that. And this just demonstrates exactly that. So uh, this story originally hit big around 2010. There was an update I found from 2016. Piecing together information from the older articles and the newer 2016 article, we come up with thieves in Paris stole money with a vacuum cleaner. Not just bits of change, but over $800,000 in cash. They noticed that the Monopri supermarkets use a pneumatic tube system to transport rolls of cash to and from the safe. Realizing this was the weakest point of, in the security, they simply drilled a big hole in the tube, hooked up a vacuum of their own, and started sucking the cash out, avoiding the lock picking or safe cracking that would otherwise be necessary. As of 2016, the vacuum gang had remained at large and they had not committed any more thefts since 2010. It seems that they were not only smart enough to figure out a method to access the cash, but they also knew when to call it quits. 
They had over 15 robberies over five years and over $800,000 in cash that they were uh, credited with stealing. And authorities think that it was the uh, 2010 theft and the publicity that it garnered that put the gang into retirement. Anyway, just points out, you can have the best safe, you can have the best door lock, you can have the best security system. But if you don't analyze your entire system the way a thief would, something like this can happen to you. Moving on to sales. As promised, Bare Bones Lockpicking has a new code. It is Train with Dalp 10 The discount code is 10% store-wide on top of any other discounts, and it expires on... June 13th, 2022. And Peterson's has their discount code along with their uh, price increase coming up. The coupon code is for 15% off and expires May 12th. So by the time you hear this, you won't have much time left, but the code will be in the show notes and it is uh, pretty confusing here. So I'm going to do it phonetically. Sierra 4, Mike Papa Bravo, Hotel Mike 75. That's uh, s 4 M P B H. M75. So check it out, thinkpeterson.com. You'll have about a day left by the time you get this episode. Over at lockpickmall.com, we have three choices of coupon codes. We have uh, for Dark Arts Lockpicking, we have the code DARKVIP. For Albert LaBelle, we have the code Albert. For Joe Picks, we have the code Joe Picks. And if you're shopping for 3D printed Locksport accessories at 3dlocksport.com, you can use the code LSCAST10 for 10% off at checkout. And we have the ever present uh, 15% off at Mako with the code buy Mako and 10% off at uklockpickers.co.uk with the code gift. Moving on to giveaways, Albert LaBelle has announced that he is going to be doing a subscriber appreciation giveaway. The video will be posted May 11th, and the giveaway will run until May 25th. So be sure to head over to his channel and check that out if you're interested in giveaways. We still have a little time left on the Who Doesn't Love Free Tools Lockswood giveaway. That runs until the 15th of May. So be sure to check that one out while you still can. Zachary Willard's 100 subscriber giveaway and challenge, the Duck Duck Goose G challenge, will be running until the 18th of May, so you still have time to check that one out. And Panda Frog's Mini Panda Frog 2 giveaway is running until the baby is born. The expected due date was the 8th of June, so be sure to get into that giveaway before the baby is actually born. And sometimes they do come early, so don't wait until the last minute. CLK Supplies has their hashtag LockBoss giveaway, so definitely worth checking out if you're into giveaways. They always have lots of interesting prizes to give away in that giveaway, so be sure to check that out. And that's it for this episode. Thank you for uh, staying tuned, listening, and helping to support the show. I apologize for this episode being late again, but I'm still working on getting my schedule back under control, and I uh, really appreciate everybody sticking with me. I've, uh, we've made a hundred episodes. We're over a hundred episodes and hopefully we can do a hundred more. So thank you. And remember everyone to keep it legal.